In this video, we'll be comparing the performance differences of all season and winter tires in the dry, wet and snow. If you've watched my recent all season and winter tire test, you should now already know what the best all season and the best winter tires are this year. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. Many of you are asking me to directly compare all season and winter tires and more than a few of you have noticed that this year I tested all season and winter tires at the same time in the same size using the same car. This has understandably led some of you to start comparing the results, but unfortunately tire testing is complicated, especially snow. And while the all season and winter tires were tested in the same week, they were tested on different days with quite a lot of temperature difference, which changes the grip of snow a huge amount. It's really actually quite surprising. Fortunately, I planned for these questions in advance, so I ran a common tire between the days so I could calculate the grip and the time changes due to the weather. But also, I'm not the only test to have run all season and winter tires in the same test this year, so I'll be pulling data from multiple sources. Just so I know we're all on the same page, we're gonna be comparing the type of tires Europeans called all season tires and Americans called all weather tires. The best known of these is of course the Michelin Cross Climate 2, but there are plenty of others such as the Redstone Quadrac Pro and some tire manufacturers have region specific tires like the Bridgestone Weather Peak and the Bridgestone Weather Control A005 Evo. The winter tires we'll be comparing are what Europeans just call winter tires and Americans tend to call performance winter tires. And that includes tires like the Michelin Pilot Alpine 5. If this confuses you, the other category of winter tire is studless snow tires like this Michelin XI snow I just have in the garage so I'm using it as a prop. Americans generally just call these winter tires, but in Europe they're known as studless frictional Nordic tires. As this type of tire is so far ahead of an all season tire in the snow and so far behind in the dry and wet, it doesn't need a huge amount of discussion. But do make sure you subscribe and turn on alerts as I have a video up coming up comparing the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, the Michelin Pilot Sport All Season 4, the Michelin Cross Climate 2 and the Michelin XI Snow to show you exactly where they all sit. It's actually a really interesting piece of content. This video sponsor is NordVPN. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll know I live between the USA and Europe and spend my life working from airports, coffee shops, train stations, basically anywhere I can get online. NordVPN helps me do all this securely by encrypting all of my internet traffic wherever I am, meaning I can be confident that my work and therefore my life won't be compromised. Not only does NordVPN keep me secure, it also allows me to set my internet exit point to anywhere in the world, meaning I can get access to geo-restricted services like TV streaming, even if I'm traveling outside of the region. NordVPN is independently tested to be the fastest VPN available and it uses distless servers so it stores nothing about your usage. If you want to protect your internet, get an exclusive deal at the URL on screen and it's linked in the description. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So how should the all-season and winter tires behave in theory? Well, when all-season tires were first produced in Europe, they were often simply winter tires with slightly less sight tread pattern, which is kind of cheating. But over the past five years, the category has had plenty of development and brands are now producing specific all-season tire compounds, constructions, and tread patterns. Even with all this work, it's important to remember there's no such thing as the perfect tire. No one tire can be the best in the dry, wet, and the snow, so tire manufacturers have to pick the balance of the three they believe is best. This means all season tires can vary quite a lot in terms of grip on different services. For example, the Michelin Cross Climate 2 is known as being the very best all season tire in dry braking and in the snow, but it isn't the strongest in the wet. And on the flip side, you have a tire like the Goodyear Vector 4 Season Generation 3, which excels in the wet, but has significantly lower grip than the Michelin in the dry. Everything is a balance. My test data is in a 17 inch wheel size. Starting with the snow performance of the tires, in my test, as I've already said, I did run a control tire between the two days, but as there was over a three seconds a lap difference between the two days and snow grip revolves throughout a single day, which we have to calculate constantly, this comparison isn't as accurate as I'd want. Basically, I wouldn't put my name to this as a full test, but the trends are interesting and are exactly as you would expect. In the snow handling test, the eight winter tires I'm comparing filled seven of the top eight spots. What was your season tire causing the upset? It was, of course, the Michelin Cross Climate 2, which actually came second fastest overall, which is crazy. There must have been something about the snow handling conditions that really worked for this tire. As we know, it's the best all season tire in the snow, but it shouldn't be baiting this many for winter tires. Fortunately for the winter tires, they took back the lead in snow traction and snow braking tests. Yes, the Michelin was still the best of the all season tires, but it was around 15% off the best winter tire in traction and 12% in braking. This is where a winter tire really does make the difference. 
Looking at the wet and dry performance, things were predictably reversed with the all-season tyres taking seven of the top eight wet spots and the same in the dry, but it was closer than in the snow. The Bridgestone Blizzak LM005, which actually won my winter test overall, was the best winter tyre in both the dry and the wet. Basically, in dry and wet handling, a good winter tyre is only one or 2% behind a good all season, but in the snow, ignoring the Michelin, a good all season tyre is five to 10% behind a winter tyre. I didn't test ice, but I would imagine the gap to be larger than in snow. I'll share the spreadsheet I've just displayed in the description. Sadly, due to testing issues I've gone into elsewhere, I didn't get the chance to cross benchmark dry and wet braking, but there are people who have. My favorite non-me all season tyre test this year was performed by the German magazine Sport Auto. Not only did they name the winter tire they included, which was the Bridgestone Blizzak LM005 we've already talked about, they also included the excellent Bridgestone Potenza Sport summer tire, and it was all done in the large 19 inch performance tire size using a sporty Hyundai i30N. This means we can see exactly how seven of the best all season tires compare against some of the best summer and winter tires. And yes, there were only nine sets of tires in total, meaning all the testing was done on the same day. Once again, in the snow, the Michelin Cross Climate 2 was the only all season tire that got close to the winter tire in braking, handling, and the slalom. Predictably, the summer tire was completely useless. Where the winter tire had the car stop from 30 miles an hour in 26.1 meters, the cross climate two was just 26.3 meters, and the summer tire was 56.8 meters. Think about that. It's that to that to, oh my God, that's a big accident. So again, summer tire is useless in the snow. We know this. Dry braking was predictably a walk in the park for the summer tire, with the Michelin Cross Climate 2 being the best of the all-season tires by quite a margin. The Bridgestone Winter Tire only managed to beat one of the all-season tires, and it was a similar story in dry handling. Wet testing was more interesting. The magazine conducted the wet test around 8 degrees centigrade or 46 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very close to the industry crossover point of a winter and summer tire. And now is probably a good tire to remind you that, in my experience at least, the Bridgestone Potenza Sport summer tire used in this test is one of the tires that takes the biggest grip penalty when it's cold. It really does like heat. That and the Bridgestone Blizzak LM005 winter tire is a bit of a specialist in the wet. It's usually one of the very best winter tires in the dry and wet. In wet braking at eight degrees centigrade, only one all season tire could beat the winter tire and only two all season tires could beat the summer tire. The rest fell behind. Like in wet braking, only one all season tire could beat the winter tire in wet handling, but the summer tire did drop down the order. Aquaplaning had just one all-season tire ahead of the summer tire, and the winter tire finished in the middle of the group. The magazine also compared noise and rolling resistance. The summer tire was the loudest, and the summer tire had the highest rolling resistance, but this might be more of a feature of the Bridgestone Potenza Sport, because of summer tires, it is generally one of the noisier ones and has a higher rolling resistance. One thing the data doesn't show us is subjective handling. In my experience, an all-season tire feels way more like a winter tire in steering response and feedback. Even the Michelin Cross Climate 2 is still a step behind the summer tire in sportiness. So if you enjoy driving like I do, or have a sporty tire size like the 19 inch in this test, you're gonna wanna keep a summer tire on for as long as possible. Finally, let's look at the 2022 auto build all season tire test. As with previous tests, they also included the summer and winter reference tire, but sadly they didn't name the tires. It's reasonable to assume that they are premium tires, but we don't know what. They also tested in a smaller 16 inch wheel size. Again, the winter tire was the best in two of the three snow tests with the Michelin Cross Climate 2 just beating the winter in snow traction. The winter tire had the least grip in the dry with the summer tire still having a significant advantage. And in the wet, the winter tire finished in the top third of the results, but the summer tire had a big advantage in wet braking and wet handling. In this test, the summer and winter tire also didn't do great in rolling resistance. That was led by the all season tires and the summer tire was once again the noisier. So maybe it's just not the Potenza Sport. So what does all this data teach us? One, all season and winter tires are currently much closer in overall performance and feel than summer and all season tires. Two, if you live in an area that sees a warm summer and a cold winter, the optimum way of motoring is still two sets of tires. Sorry, it just is. You can't get close to a summer tire in the dry and often the wet, especially in sporty applications, and the winter tire has the advantage in the snow. Having said that, modern all season tires are excellent at what they're trying to do, and they're getting better all the time. Three, as I've said before, using an all season tire as a winter tire for milder regions makes a lot of sense. If you live somewhere like the UK and you experience a lot more dry and wet running over winter, an all season tire as a winter tire makes a lot of sense to me as you'll still be fine in the few days of snow running you might experience, but you'll be better off overall in the dry and wet. But the most important thing this should teach us is that a tire choice is way more important than tire type. 
There are definitely all season tires which side more with winter performance. And there are definitely winter tires which side more with all season performance. There are good all season tires which are better than winter tires in bad winters. And there are good winter tires which are better all season tires than bad all season tires. So as always, my message is the same. Don't just listen to me or anyone else for that matter. Do your own research on sites like tirereviews.com to find the best tire that works for your own driving needs. Don't rely on just one test or one review or even one video. Try and reference multiple data sources and really study the data and the test. Tires are hugely complicated and your driving needs are unique. There is no one best tire for everyone. All the tests I've referenced are linked in the description below. Any questions, please ask. And as always, safe motoring.